Testing, testing, testing. Okay, we have pretty, pretty good audio levels. Hello, and welcome to the CS2 Beginner's Guide. Today, I'm going to be going over some of the basic aspects of shooting and accuracy. Feel free to skip around using the video chapters. All right, so we've got tapping, bursting, spraying, and flick shots, which I'll be getting to flick shots later. Tapping is just firing off individual shots one at a time. This is good to use for medium to long range. Bursting would be firing between two and four shots and is also great for medium to long. And spraying is when you just let it fly. Spraying is the ideal way to shoot at close to medium range. If you get the spray control down really well, then you can get away with using it for longer range, but it's best at close range. But before we get into this, first I'm going to recommend that you practice the MP9, the FAMAS, and the M4 for the CT side, and the MAC-10, Galil, and AK-47 for the terrorist side when you are first starting out. These are the most essential weapons for a new player to master. When practicing spray patterns, I like to just find a nice clean wall like this. Type in SV underscore show impacts one, and this will turn on impacts so you can see where your bullets are landing. And then you want to be focusing on getting your spray pattern as tight as possible. The way you achieve this is by pulling the mouse down. Each weapon has their own spray pattern, but for most of them, they are just pulling down and either to the right or to the left later in the pattern. So for most of that, I'm pretty much just pulling down. You can look up the spray patterns online, or if you are practicing like this, you can just spray into the wall and you can see it's going up and a little bit to the left, so you would pull down and a little bit to the right to counteract it. You can do this at different distances. When you're practicing spray patterns, you really want to be focusing on just getting down the first like seven to 10 shots. For this reason, I opt for leaving infinite ammo off and activating it manually in console with SV Infinite Ammo 2, because SV Infinite Ammo 2 actually makes you reload. You still have unlimited ammo, but that allows you to see how many bullets in the spray you are controlling at a time. Also, something I forgot to mention, another useful console command that you'll want to input when practicing your spray downs is weapon underscore accuracy no spread true so if you don't know all spray patterns in counter-strike have a bit of deviation to them and this creates a problem when you're practicing because it makes it difficult to tell how well you are really improving but by setting the weapon spread to off it makes it so that each spray is always identical meaning when you're practicing you can actually see how much you are improving over time so it's important to remember to put that in as well when fighting with pistols at longer range, you want to be tapping and pacing out each shot instead of just spraying. Because when you're spraying, the bullets go in a huge spread. And if you pace out the shots, you'll get a much more accurate shot. Now the things that cause weapon inaccuracy are spraying, obviously and moving. Certain weapons are more adept at moving, like the MAC-10 and the MP9, or the pistols. But if you're running and gunning with the AK, you'd be lucky to hit an elephant, much less a player. However, there is a technique that allows you to shoot accurately while moving, and it's called counter strafing. So counter strafing is where you tap the key opposite of the key you're currently strafing with. So if I'm strafing right, I tap left. If I'm strafing left, tap right. And what this does is it resets your accuracy so you can shoot as soon as you press the key. You don't have to wait until you come to a stop. Because normally, if you just 
try to wait till you come to a stop. As you can see, those rounds are not going where I'm actually aiming. But if you tap the key opposite to bring yourself to a stop, that will make reset your accuracy, allowing you to fire accurately immediately. Now, obviously, this is an incredibly valuable tool to have in your skill set. So this is something that all new players should be practicing. So if you've ever been shot by a player that looks like they were moving, this is probably what they did. Now I'm going to talk about mouse sensitivity. The sensitivity is a very personal thing. Some people like it fast, some people like it slow, but it's recommended to have it fairly low for a game like Counter-Strike. I have my mouse on 1600 DPI with an in-game sensitivity of 0.33, which is pretty low. I'm definitely on the lower end of the spectrum and I have raw input on, of course. Now with these settings, I can just barely do a 180 if I across the entirety of my mouse pad. And my mouse pad is 17 inches across. So it's a pretty low sensitivity. This is just what I'm used to. Just find something that works for you. There's a great guide that I will link down below that will help you find the perfect sensitivity for you if you wanna do it. I didn't, I just played and just kept adjusting until I got what feels good. Having my mouse sensitivity this low gives me a lot of control. It allows me to be more accurate. I can still be quick, I just have to make large movements with my arm. And this is a nice segue into my next topic, arm positioning and posture. So you absolutely must have your elbow planted firm either on the arm of your chair or your desk. This will give you better control of your mouse as you use your elbow as a pivot point. This is how you will be able to perform fast, accurate movements like a flick shot. It's going to be really difficult to pull off things like a flick shot if your arm is floating in the air, so you want to have it grounded. And for posturing, I keep my feet in a wide stance planted on the ground, and I lean slightly forward towards my computer screen. If you struggle focusing on the game, getting closer to your screen is the easiest way to improve your focus. I myself sit about nine to 10 inches away from my screen, but do what's good for you. Uh, that could be fucking up my eyes. I, you know, I've, we'll, we'll find out years down the line, I guess. All right, so I would recommend that each time before you play to hop in an empty server like this, you could practice either a spray control, counter strafing, whatever you decide that you're practicing that day. You could be practicing smoke lineups, it doesn't matter. But just 10 minutes a day of practice will, that is enough time that you will begin to improve. And then after doing your practice, I would recommend warming up in a game of deathmatch before you begin playing. And when you're deathmatching, really swing your arm around, allow yourself to get warmed up, put yourself in positions where you're forced to take out one enemy and then immediately flick over to another enemy that forces you to make a large adjustment. This is, this is how you'll get a feel for flick shots and just for your sensitivity in general. And also another general tip for new players, try to avoid crouching all the time when you're getting in firefights. A lot of newer players like to crouch because it resets your accuracy. And if you're spraying, oftentimes it ends with your crosshair going up to their head and you getting a headshot off of a spray. Now I know this sounds good, but this will just act as a, a crutch and it will prevent you from actually improving your spray and improving your counter strafing because you'll know I don't need to do any of that. I can just crouch when I get into a firefight. So just remember crouching is great, It's but it's situational and you shouldn't abuse it. And also crouching heavily, crouching slows your movement down so much that it makes you an easy target for the opponent. And if the opponent doesn't have very good aim to begin with, it's possible that they are aiming at your chest, not your head. And when you crouch, you're lowering your head down into their crosshairs, making it easy for them to kill you. Now when you hop into a deathmatch and you're warming up, you could either join a public deathmatch server or you could create a private server with bots. For newer players, I would highly recommend that you create a new server, that you create a custom server with bots. Because public servers typically have too many players to, to the point where the, the spawn system in this game for deathmatch honestly is just terrible, it's really bad you'll constantly be getting spawn camped. You'll be just be spawning in front of people. People will be spawning in front of you. It's way too crowded. And there will often be three or four 
really advanced players among just newer players and they're just going to wipe the floor with everybody and it's not going to be very much fun and it's going to be difficult for you to actually warm up because you won't be able to kill anything so i would recommend starting off playing just against bots practicing your spray control your counter strafing and then warming up with a death match every time before you play will result in you getting better and that is a guarantee but anyways that's all i got for you guys thanks for watching hopefully you learned something if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you didn't like it thumbs it down next week i'm going to be coming at you guys with a video on crosshair placement it's very good material for new players to learn and it typically results in drastic improvement pretty much overnight if you just begin implementing that so if you're a new player stay tuned for that and feel free to subscribe and i'll see y'all in the next one peace